praise the Lord. We give God the praise. Once again, you're welcome to World Congress, a discipleship communion of the Life for All Nations mission, bringing you God's word for life transformation. We trust that as we get God's word this morning, our lives will never remain the same in Jesus' name. Amen. Let us pray. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, we thank you for another session to feed on the word. We pray that the entrance of your word this morning indeed will bring light and understanding and every blindness of the mind be removed. Every hindrance to receiving the light of God's word be removed. Let understanding be granted this morning. Let the word bring deliverance, healing, salvation, and refreshment to the souls of every man, man, boy, girl watching this morning in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, mighty Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. All right. We are taking the team, Believers Accompanying Signs. Believers Accompanying Signs. Believers accompanying science. And when we say believers accompanying science, we're talking about the science that accompany believers. The science that accompany believers. That to accompany means to follow. Or something that is seen, manifested. Something that is used to identify someone. This is the thing that follows him anywhere you go. This is the trail that we see in his life. This is his trademark, as it were. Hallelujah. The Bible tells us in the book of Mark, chapter 16, verse 15 to 20, which is going to be our text this morning. Jesus said to them, Go into all the world and preach the gospel to everyone. Whoever believes and is baptized will be saved. But whoever does not believe will be condemned. These miraculous signs will accompany those who believe. They will cast out demons in my name. And they will speak in new languages. They will be able to handle snakes with safety. And if they drink anything poisonous, it won't hurt them. They will be able to place their hands on the sick and they will be healed. After that, the Lord Jesus has spoken to them. He was taken up into heaven and he sat at the right hand of God. Then the disciples went out and preached everywhere. And the Lord worked with them and confirmed his word by signs that accompanied it. Hallelujah. The Lord went with them and confirmed the word. Now, when Jesus rose from the dead, he introduced the good news, the gospel, in a dimension that he had not done before. You know, uh, before this time, we see that Jesus Christ went about preaching the good news, telling people, repent ye, for the kingdom of God is at hand. That at hand means it's near. He was projecting the good news. It is just like the gospel as preached by, you know, uh, the Holy Spirit to the believers who lived before our time. When the Bible says that Abraham saw my days and rejoiced, that is what it's talking about. What did he see? Hallelujah. Abraham saw my days and rejoiced. Jesus was preaching a gospel that, is, that was futuristic. Everything he was saying was a promise. Repent. Get set. Set your mind. Turn away from what you used to hold on to. Turn away from the kingdoms of this world. Turn, uh, turn away from the, 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 the rule, the government of men. Turn away from what has, has kept you the way it is all this while. Because another kingdom is coming. Another kingdom is coming. And he told them that that kingdom is within them. Within them is among them. 
meaning that he is the king of that kingdom. And then all those while he was, it was like a promise of what is yet to happen. But when he rose from the dead, it was no, lo no longer a promise as contained in his earlier teachings. It is already fulfilled. The victory has been won. In Christ, humanity has finally been freed from the cause of sin and death. The curse of sin and death that emanated from breaking the law of sin and death. Remember the Bible says, when Adam sinned, God said, when you eat of this tree, you will surely die. So death was introduced into the world. Say, as by one man, sin came into the world. And death came through sin. And so death passed to all men. Because in Adam, all have sinned. So you have not sinned because you have done something. You are incorporated in this united sin. That's it, we are. Hallelujah. In him, all have fallen short of the glory of God. But when Jesus rose from the dead, it is the fulfillment of God's promise that the seed of the woman will bruise the head of the serpent. And that has been accomplished. Victory has been won. The prize or the ransom for, 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 for sin has been paid. An everlasting life has been brought to bear. Death has been conquered. Sin has been destroyed by the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ. All power in heaven and on earth has been restored to man. We talk about the devil having power. And he's very powerful. He's very powerful. But when Jesus rose from the dead, he said, All power in heaven and on earth has been given to me. And by that power, I charge you to go out and bring this good news that everything has been accomplished. Hallelujah. Everything has been perfected. All power in heaven and on earth has been restored to man. When I say to man, it has been brought. In Christ, it has been restored. The power of sin and death have been destroyed. The power of sin and death have been destroyed. Satan, the devil, who is the executor of that power, the Bible says, For as much then as the children are partakers of flesh and blood, he also himself took part of the sin that through death he might destroy the one who has the power of death, and that is the devil. So by his death and resurrection, he destroyed the one who has the power of death. Jesus has, in line with his purpose, destroyed the work of the devil. He said, for this purpose, the Son of God was manifested, that he might what? Destroy the works of the devil. And that work of the devil, his, his grip over humanity has been broken. Hallelujah. The wages of sin have been destroyed. The gift of God, which is eternal life, is now available. To all who will accept it. That is the good news. That is the good news. We are no longer under the bondage. It's like people who are locked up in the prison. There was, there was a, 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 a movie I watched some time ago. Some children were captured by ritualists. And they were locked up in a room. Some of them have been there for one year, some two years, some three years, some six months. And fresh words have been brought in. But something happened along the line. One of the kidnappers decided to change. And then he went to that room and opened the door and left. So the door is open and they now have the freedom to come out. Hallelujah. They now have what? The freedom to come out. That is what Jesus Christ did. When he rose from the dead, he broke the chains of death, the power of death that is capable of holding humanity under the captivity of the devil. That is total deliverance. That is salvation. That is freedom. Hallelujah. 
and now the only way you can come out of that room is by receiving life because you are already dead in sin and trespasses. So when you receive the life that he has brought out through his resurrection, that is given through his spirit, you now get that empowerment to resurrect like he resurrected. That Bible says that we have been risen with Christ. So when you receive that spirit of Christ in you, you also have risen spiritually from that captivity of the power of Satan. That is the good news. The good news is not about, you know, uh, 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 just talking this, you know, talking, reading a scripture and saying anything that is contrary. We are talking about the problem of man. And the real problem of man is sin and death. That is what have deprived man the ability to reign on earth as enshrined in God's order in Genesis chapter 1 verse 26. And you go down to 27, 28. When he said, let us make man in our own image and let them have rule. Let them have rule. Hallelujah. Not that the things of this world will have rule over them. Not that they, have, they will have rule under the control of another person. But that they will have rule under God. And that is what Jesus Christ accomplished through his resurrection. He rose from the dead and with a new life, with an immortal life. He brought immortality to light. And so he says, go into all the world and let everyone know what has been done. If you don't know what has been done, you will still be living in the past. You see, there are, you know, in Nigeria in those days, there are states that uh, we had, had 19 states. And one of the states was called Bendel State. So some time ago, met, I met a man. And then I told the man, oh, which state do you come from? I met the man here in Ghana, and I asked the man, which state do you come from in Nigeria? So I came from Bendel State, and I laughed. Bendel State, when did you come to Ghana? So I came to Ghana in 1950-something. <laughs> Hallelujah. He was even here before the, 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 the independence of Ghana. Hallelujah. And so he was still thinking of Bendel State. Well, he doesn't know that his new state is Edo State. Now, he was living in the past. He was not living in the current state. Some years ago, to, by, the, by privilege, I was in Egypt. And then we were in a hotel. And I went to buy something. And I met one man that was selling something there. And the man asked me, oh, you are from Nigeria? I said, yes. And the man said, oh, uh, how about the president, Babangida? How is the, how is the president, Babangida? I said, ah, which president? He said, is, is Babangida not your president? I said, the man left years ago. In fact, other people have come and go and come and go. And go. <laughs> He's not even there. So that man is living in the past because he does not know. He does not know what has happened. The same way many Christians or many people in the world are still living under their captivity. They are still trying their best to come out, trying to look for a God to appease, to get freedom from the powers of evil that everybody knows is obvious in the whole world. The reign of terror of Satan the devil is not a hidden thing. Whether you are a Christian or not, everybody knows that there are evil powers, there are evil forces. But they don't know that these powers and forces have been what conquered. They are not powerful anymore. They operate with your ignorance. Once you don't know that they are not powerful, they make you to become weak. They present God as weakling and present themselves as super. That is why you see people, when they go to church, they say they are running to church to hide their head. They are scared. They don't know that the person you are scared of has been disarmed. The Bible says that, that through his resurrection, he disarmed principalities and powers. Now, when we read Ephesians chapter 6, that says, Though we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Hallelujah. He said that is what is contending with humanity. But it says Christ have disarmed principalities and what and powers and have elevated those who have believed to sit with him in the place of victory. That's why it says, in this world, principalities and powers and all these terrorist spirits will terrify you. But be of good cheers. 
in him you are victorious. For greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. That is the good news for those who will believe. We are out there to let you know that these things that have kept men under bondage, these things that have made people to sacrifice their children, sacrifice their goats, their fowls, their everything to one deity or the other, to, to attract his, their blessing, to attract their power, to attract, you don't need those things because Christ has connected every human being back to God if only they will accept that connection. You may receive an NTN connection in your phone, but if you don't connect, it will still not work. Everywhere you are, there is network. But if the network is not connected with your device, it will not work. And the good news is to tell everybody that sin and death, which has separated man from God, has been destroyed. It does not hold anybody anymore. The gates of hell have been broken. And everyone is free to come out into a new life of freedom. When the Bible says, I will build my church and the gate of hell shall not prevail. We think that is about, about our local assembly. Oh, Father, let us pray now. The Bible says, I will build a church and the gate of hell, I will build a church, uh, 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 life for nations, and the gate of hell shall not overcome it. That is not what they're talking about. He says, Upon this rock, upon your faith in me, you will be part of the body of Christ, be part of the church, the gathering, the people that have been redeemed. And the power of hell cannot withhold you anymore. Because you don't know that before Christ came, we are all in hell. We are all in hell. Hell means the place of the dead. And we are all dead in sin and trespasses. And in Christ, he has quickened us into eternal life, which is heaven. That's why I say we are seated in the heavenly places. So we are in hell. And the gate of hell has been opened. Anyone who believes in this gospel that Jesus Christ has accomplished all that, have, all that is required for us to walk in the power and the glory of God, then you will receive the quickening power of the Spirit. And it will bring you out. And so you are accompanied in the, in, in, the, in the entourage of those who resurrected with Jesus Christ. Somebody was telling me some time ago, so when Jesus Christ rose from the dead, many saints came out. That is a symbolic representation of the liberation of everyone who is joined with Christ. Hallelujah. That is why he said, go into the world and proclaim the good news. The good news is that, it's not that, okay, ah, uh, this is your problem. Bring this and bring that. Sow this or sow that. Do this or do that. No. The good news is that it has been done. I don't need to pay for it anymore. I don't need to struggle about it anymore. All that the devil has done to the fall of man have been destroyed. But you can remain in that destruction if you are not knowledgeable of God's word. The gate of hell has been broken. And everyone is free to come out into this new life. Free from the yoke of bondage. Everlasting salvation is now open to everyone. In all ramifications. No rituals. No sacrifices. No special covenants with terms and conditions. Everything is absolutely free. All you need to do is to agree. Hallelujah. There is nothing else. That is required of you. Now, everyone has the choice. Everybody. It doesn't matter whether you call yourself a religious person or not. Every human being has the choice of coming out of the gates of hell or the choice of remaining there. Some people have chosen to remain in that world and be parading themselves in the name of religion, still offering sacrifices. She tried to do many obeisance. She tried to pay tributes. She tried to do a lot of things to, to liberate themselves, to pour libation along the riverside, to, to tie one goat and fowl on your neck, to bath yourself with some blood, to go and carry some money and throw some to some river, to plant one thing here or there. All those things are signs that you have refused to come out from debt. You have chosen to remain in the pit of corruption. The Bible says those who live in the pit of corruption cannot praise the Lord. Only the living 
can praise the Lord. Jesus Christ says, the people that can relate with God or worship God as we are, are people who can do it in spirit. And if your spirit is dead, how can you worship God? In Christ, your spirit is made alive. You are joined with life. Jesus Christ is eternal life. The life of God made human. You are joined with him. And you have become one with him. Hallelujah. So that freedom is that. That is the good news. Go into the world and preach the good news to everyone. They have the choice. He that believe and accept this freedom will be saved. But he that does not believe will remain in condemnation. Is that what you want? Why will you remain in condemnation? Even many who have claimed to have received Jesus are still living in condemnation of the same thing they think they have brought, they brought out. They still beg and wallow under the captivity of the devil because they are blinded, because they are ignorant. He said, my people are destroyed. My people are frustrated. My people are put in bondage. Even though they have liberation, they are in bondage because they are ignorant. Stand fast, therefore, in the liberty wherein Christ has made us what? Free. Not free to become rotten. But freedom from rottenness, freedom from stupidity, freedom from sin, freedom from all kinds of evil. You are free from them. You are not free to do them. You are free from them. Some people think that freedom in Christ is that I can now do anyhow I like. I can fornicate. I can steal. I can fight. I can I can swindle people. I can I can lie. I can do anyhow I like because Jesus Christ has made me free to behave anyhow. No, no. He is freeing you from that thing because you are not free. That behaving anyhow is, is bondage. He said they are under the control of the prince of the power of the air. The spirit that controls those who are disobedient. So you are not having freedom. You are having bondage if you are living in sin. Hallelujah. Don't, don't use, grace of God does not put you into sin. Grace of God brings you out. Shows you that you are free. You don't need to pay anything to be free. You don't need to appease God to be free. God has delivered you. God has freed you. All you need to do is to believe and you enjoy the benefit of this freedom that you have in Jesus Christ. Jesus said, God did not send me into the world to condemn the world for their sins, but to save them from their sins. And he said, whoever believes in me is free from condemnation, but whoever does not believe have chosen to remain in condemnation. It's your choice. The door has been broke open. That is the good news. The debt has been paid. That is the good news. Hallelujah. You are free. Free from that bondage that have kept you down. And that bondage is the bondage of sin and death, which is the primary trouble of man. It's not your, 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 pro, your contemporary problems. It's not because maybe you don't have money or because you don't have a car or because you, don't, you didn't go to school or because you can't afford food. These are minor. They are nothing compared to the real problem you have, which is the problem of eternal death brought about by sin. And not just because of the sin you did, but the sin you have become. You are born in sin. It's your nature. But in Christ, it has been broken so you can take this freedom. Hallelujah. A pastor bought two suits for two pastors. He went to the supermarket. He gave them his credit card. He said, I'm sending two pastors to come here. They'll come here. Please, when they come, just give them two suits. This is my credit card. Hallelujah. And then he called the two pastors. He said, please go to the supermarket. I've already paid for two suits, two nice suits for you. Go there and pick your own. And the pastor said, oh, thank you very much. One of the pastors the following week went there and picked his own suit and thanked the, the senior pastor that bought it for them. The other one didn't go. One week he didn't go. Two weeks he didn't go. One month he didn't go until it was the time uh, 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 given for him to collect was over. That's how many people are. Is it, are you, he doesn't have a suit. Not because the suit is not available, but because he refused to collect it. He refused to take what has been made available for him. Hallelujah. So are you rejecting? He said, how shall we escape if we neglect so great salvation? The wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. The wages of sin 
will not be demanded from anyone to be paid. You will not pay. The wages of sin which is dead cannot be paid for you because to you because someone has take it, taken it. Rather, you have to receive the gift of eternal life, which is yours in Christ Jesus, now and in the world to come. Now, having believed, because you have believed, you are sealed with the promised Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is no longer a promise. The Holy Spirit has already come. The Comforter has come. The Comforter has come. The Holy Ghost of Heaven. The promise of the Father given. O oh, spread the tide wide. Wherever man is found. The Comforter has come. He didn't come today. He came even before you were born. Before you were born into this world. The Comforter is already there waiting for you. All you have to do is to open. If you openly confess the Lord Jesus with your mouth and believe in your heart that his death and resurrection have settled every matter that puts you under any bondage, you are free. The Holy Spirit does not take time. It goes into you immediately. You don't need to feel it physically. You don't need to feel some shaking or some cold body. No, it is a work of faith. You know it is done. You know it is done. Just like when somebody sent you mobile money, and then uh, 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 sometimes you don't even see the, 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 the alert. Then you just go to check your account and see that the money is already there. Sometimes it takes almost from one, one or two hours, then the alert will come. But you have even spent the money before the alert will now come that money was spent into your account. I've experienced it before. Are you understanding me now? So you don't need to feel anything to be sure that your salvation has come. You don't need to feel any kind of, you know, shaky, shaky. Or, you know, no, 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 no. Hallelujah. Once you have believed, once your heart is open and you have received what has been given, it is done. Lord Jesus, I receive the gift of eternal life that you have brought for me. In Jesus' name, amen. You have received it. And then you should know that from that moment, all power in heaven and on earth has been given to you. You should know that the devil has no power over you, whether in the form of a diabolic demon, whether in the form of occultic powers, whether it's in the form of a, a fetish, whatever, whether it's in the form of a, a juju, whatever thing they call it, it has no power over you. You must change your mindset to that. That is why he said that you did not only become born again by the Holy Spirit, that born again plus bless you in another level of existence. You are now a new creature. In that born again, that, that, that spirit of Christ that you have received have placed you above principalities and powers, has given you some audacity, that has given you some, some characteristics that you never had before. And that's what Jesus Christ says, and these signs shall accompany those that believe. You are empowered in Jesus' name. Now you can cast out demons. Why is it say cast out demons? We are still living in the world. The other world is yet to manifest. Our real world is yet to come. But in Christ, we are operating with the power of the kingdom of God. For thine is the kingdom power and glory. We have received the kingdom power and the kingdom glory. Hallelujah. But you must change your mind to understand that you have the power to cast out demons. Because the demons are still around. They have not been judged and thrown to hell yet. So they are still around like flies, trying to perch. Trying to cause one thing or the other. Some people are working for them. Some people are still under their influence because they have refused to accept the freedom that is Christ Jesus. So they are operating. And their operation seems so obvious because they are out there in the world. That is why you see them manifest in all kinds of immorality, in all kinds of ritualistic act, uh, acts, killing, destruction, and all kinds of evil. These are people who are being used by demons. They are being used by the prince of the power of the air. Hallelujah. These are the people who are doomed to be destroyed at the end of time because they have refused to receive life. Now, if you are born again, you have received eternal life, you have power over them. But if you do not know, if you are ignorant of that, they will take advantage of you. Unfortunately, in the church, they teach us more of how powerful the devil is. 
And the only way you can be free from their influence is to connect to one big man of God, to one strong man of God. You have to join one, one church or the other and say, hey, this is the place. This church is the headquarter. Uh, this is where God lives. These are all lies from, 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 from human beings. They are not true. You are the headquarter of God. It is not a building. God does not live in a house built by human hand. God lives in your heart. If you are born again, God lives in your heart by the Holy Spirit. So you don't need to look for signs and wonders running from pillar to post if you have received this life. You have been empowered to God to cast out demons. We are trained and brought up to believe that <laughs> demons are vowed. You cannot joke with demons. So <laughs> a a, a part-time Christian cannot deal with a, a full-time demon. They project and, pro, and, and, and promote demons. When they teach the course we call demonology, it is to promote demons. But when we teach demonology in FBTC, we teach you that demons have been brought down. They know. The demons, they know. They know who you are, but they want to intimidate you. There was a brother who used to be a criminal. Now he, he became born again, as it were, and also became a pastor. So one day, there's a, a, a particular town, you know, that a, a area, one area in one town, and that area, criminals operate there usually at night. If you are holding your phone, they will snatch the phone from you or beat you up and all that. He used to do that before. So now he saved, and then one day he was passing across that place in the night and was carrying about three phones in his hand. He didn't put them in his pocket. He was holding them and was walking majestically. And these criminals came out, trying to intimidate him. Said, oh, boy, stop there. I'll oh, bring that thing you're holding. He looked at them. He didn't fidget. He didn't shake. And they were shocked that he wasn't getting scared. He said, look, look, look. People with one phone are scared of passing through this room. And you saw me with three phones. And I didn't hide it. Didn't he tell you something? <laughs> when they saw the way he spoke, they said, bah, 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 bah. all of them, they just cleared on the way and he passed. Because if he does not know who he is and stood against that intimidation, he would have been intimidated to surrender those three phones to them. That is what the, the devil is doing, trying to intimidate you. As long as you don't know who you are, you don't know who lives in you. It's not that I know my God that I'm serving I, because I belong to one church. I am a daughter of Bishop Timothy. I'm the daughter of Bishop uh, Archidikin. I'm the daughter of uh, Archbishop Prophet uh, Achampong. I'm the son of uh, Archbishop uh, Johnson, Johnson Abuja. No. But as many as receive him, to them he gave the power to become sons of God. I'm not calling on the God of Bishop Timothy or God of Reverend Antonia. No. My God lives in me. He's not far away. That, the, that woman who sang the song said, I know he's not far from me. You, you say it, but do you believe it? We know we, we have, have a very big God. Oh, he is always by my side. Yet we, we say it, but we are scared. We are, we, are, we are, maybe because of my sins, he will not be with me anymore. Who told you? But yet you sing, all my sins are taken away. You sing it, but you don't believe it. There's no barrier between you and God anymore. Jesus Christ took care of that. I, I was invited somewhere some time ago. And then I arrived, the, the, the person I went to look for was not around. Then I called the person, I said, ah, please, where are you? The person said, okay, there is keys. The key to the room is so, 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 place. Take it and go inside. I said, okay. So I took the key and I went into the room and I saw a delicious meal, well packaged with water, everything. I said, so I sat down. I was very hungry, but I didn't eat the food. I was thinking that maybe the person is also expecting an harvest store who owns that food or is their own food. So I didn't touch, you know, as a gentleman as I am. So I sat down. I wait, 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 wait. I tried to call, but my line wasn't going. But I was hungry. So I said, oh, I will eat it. I will eat this food. And when it comes, I will explain. 
<laughs> so I sat down and I ate the food, drank the water. Uh, when they come, if you have to buy another one, we'll buy it. I ate everything and relaxed. When the person came back and uh, and uh, I told, he said, did you eat the food? I said, oh yes, I'm eating it. Yeah, it's your food I kept for you. I said, eh? if not that I muzzled up and ate this food, I would have been hungry till now. Hallelujah. That is how many Christians are. We are the food that God has given to us is just there in front of us, but we feel that it's for one strong one of God. It's one strong prayer warrior who has been praying on the mountain Everest 24 hours. It's for that brother who has fasted for 40 days and 40 nights. It's for that sister who has sown a dangerous seed. It's for that auntie who have who have traveled to Jerusalem and have gone to the Mount of Transfiguration and lay down there and prayed for 40 hours. It's for the sons and daughters of that great prophet. Not for you. So you are looking for them. Please, can I? You are begging for what belongs to you. Because the teachings you have received, the in in insight you have received, bless you more into another bondage. No wonder Paul says, stand fast therefore in the liberty wherein Christ has made us free. And do not tie yourself again, again into the yoke of bondage. May God Sanctify the mind of believers this morning in Jesus' name. He said, in my name you will what? Cast out demons. Be bold. No matter, he didn't say small demons and big demons. Any kind of demon. Whether it's a demon with seven heads. In my name you shall cast out demons. In my name you speak in new tongues. Many Christians speak in tongues, but they cannot cast out demons. You believe the tongue oh, because it's just in your mouth. Blah, 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 blah. But do you also believe that you can cast out demons? What? This demon, ah, it is an ancient demon. No? Huh. This spirit, this, ah, this spirit, ah, it has destroyed many churches. It has destroyed many pastors. They have destroyed churches and pastors, human things. I don't know who the pastor is. I don't know who the church is, but I know who Jesus is. He said, Jesus, I know. Who are you? Oh, they told David, Goliath have conquered a lot of people, but only one small stone. Fired by faith in Jesus. Brought Goliath down. You say, faith in Jesus. Yes, faith in Jesus. Faith in the Messiah. Faith in the deliverer of Israel. The strong one of Israel. Who is still Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. It didn't take five minutes for Goliath to come down. The man who had conquered the world was brought down just by a small stone. That demon that is bigger than everything. That challenge that is bigger than everything is brought down by your little faith. Jesus Christ said, if you shall have faith as small as mustard seed, it's a little smaller than a stone. You have the power to handle snakes with safety. And you shall not bite. Look at Paul. He was preaching and snake did what? Beat his hand. People were expecting him to fall down and die. said, this snake, ha 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 ha. This snake is very, very poisonous. Paul is finished. And then Paul just shook off the beast into the fire and felt no harm. Why did he feel no harm? Is it because there's no blood or that the snake didn't put poison into his blood? But because his mindset had been transformed and he understands who, who he is, those who know their God will be strong. Many of us believers who don't know our God, yes, we worship God, but we don't know him. All we know is the is the purported useless stories told by many people, which makes us more weak. And you see Christians more as beggars. We try to compromise to suit in. We, in any country where you have other religion dominant and we are few, we, we try to compromise to beg them. We try to uh, beg. We are like subordinate clause. No, we are not. We are chief over principalities and powers. You can handle snake. And if you drink any poisonous thing, it will not hurt you. Today, they teach us a lot of things about uh, food. Don't eat maggot. Don't eat salt. Don't eat this. The things that you can eat in moderation normally and don't eat, don't just be chopping grass like, like goat. Only grass. Don't eat meat. Don't eat anything. Just be eating grass. Go, go, go grass, put it into the pot, parboil it and chop. That should be your food. Many people are tied to that bondage. Years ago, I went to the hospital and they diagnosed one nonsense. And they said, I will not eat any soup that has meat. I will not eat any soup that has oil. I will not eat any soup that have 
salt. I will go, hey, all the things they prepare, I go, just one dark vegetable thing. And my mother decided to be preparing a separate soup for me and prepare their own with all the economies, meat and everything. And when others are eating and I'm eating my own bondage that the doctor gave to me, I felt so down, so depressed. Then one day I was, I, I kept reading my Bible and I kept saying, ah, you shall eat deadly things and shall not talk to you. These things have no power over me. I am not even eating them too much. Just more small I'm eating. What is that nonsense? I told my mother, I'm eating that one. You eat. He said, no, the doctor said, I said, me, I said, I'm eating that one. Hallelujah. From that day, my mother said, okay, in that case, I will combine your own with our own. I will eat together. <laughs> Hallelujah. If not, I would have been tied to that bondage for the rest of my life. I was just a young boy, but I, the little I knew from God's word helped me. Helped me. Too much listening to most of these apostles that are teaching dimensions and dimensions and dimensions these days will frustrate your life. They tell me, let, let me talk about Satan a little bit. No, Satan, Satan, you cannot, you cannot listen to me. All power in heaven and on earth has been given. Even if it is Satan, he said, cast out demons. It didn't say kill demons. Cast them out. When you cast them out, they are cast out. You don't cast them out. When you ask your servant to go away, you don't follow him to see whether you go away. Hey, my friend, get out of here. You know he will obey you because he knows the consequences of not obeying you. Hallelujah. You shall drink the little thing and it shall not hurt you. You will place your hand on the sick and they shall recover. And if you can place your hand on the sick and the sick recover, you can also place hand on yourself and you recover. As long as you have that understanding in your mind. Because your mind controls your real manifestation. As a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. You may have Jesus in your heart. You may have, you may have uh, 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 the all power in heaven and earth loaded in you. But if you don't know and exercise them, they will not work for you. Bible says in Psalm 91, He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. He shall say of the Lord, He is my refuge, my God in whom I trust. Surely He will deliver me from the snare of the fowler. Hallelujah. And from the deadly pestilence, he will cover you with his feathers and under his wing you find refuge. His faithfulness will be your shield and rampart. Rampart means defense wall. You will not fear the terror of the night, nor the arrow that fly by the day, nor the pestilence that snacks in darkness, nor the pearl, the plagues that destroy in the midday. A thousand may fall at your right hand, ten thousand at your left or whatever, but it will not come near you. You will only observe with your eyes and see how the wicked will be punished. Hallelujah. Evil shall slay the wicked, and the haters of the righteous shall perish. So, these are not the things you pray for. You don't pray for them to happen. You know that that is how it is, and you decree. He said, and you shall make a decree, and it shall be established unto you. Jesus told Peter, Upon this rock, I will build my church. I have given you the keys of the kingdom. Whatever you allow on earth shall be allowed in heaven. Whatever you disallow on earth shall be disallowed in heaven. It is time to rise up and manifest the miraculous signs and wonders that God has given to you. Miraculous signs and wonders are the manifestation of the power of God. And angels are there to accomplish them. As you decree them, the angels go to work. Hallelujah. Remember when David chose that he won plague in Egypt, in Israel, when, uh, you know, God was asking him to make a choice. He said, plague. And one angel came and brought plague. <laughs> Whatever you say, the angels will do it. Because the angels are ministering spirits to the heads of salvation. Science and wonders are God's supernatural power. Breaking into the natural world and doing what is impossible by natural physical laws. That's why sometimes doctors will say, I don't know how this man survived. My mother was sick some time ago and they said that all the blood in her body has finished. When the doctors tested her blood, there's only four grams. Only four grams of blood. They would wonder, how did she survive in four grams? And God did this miracle and blood came back in full force. 
and he survived a surgery that would have killed her at that time. The doctor said he, he, he's shocked. Hallelujah. When, the doc, when she went back for checkup, they said, ah, you are still alive. <laughs> Praise the name of the Lord. So signs and wonders have specific purpose. It helps you in manifesting God's kingdom and advancing God's kingdom. Remember, you are not born again to begin to use power to do your things. I have power now. I can use it to kill people. I can use it to do any how I like. No. The power accompanied those who are committed to the gospel of Jesus Christ. And how are you committed to it? Go into the world and preach. You say you are born again. When last did you preach the gospel to your, to your friend? When last did you share a tracks? You, okay, you don't, you don't know how to preach mouth own. When last did you collect what digest that we have here and go and distribute? Every of your friends, none of them, you have never had Jesus Christ come out of your mouth. He said, I know my God, he has done it for me. He has done it for me. God is not about done it for you, done it for you. You are the one to do it. Thank God, a man of God was saying that uh, way maker, miracle worker, promise keeper. That it is you that is that way maker. God has empowered you to go and make it. How God anointed you with the Holy Spirit and with power to go out there and do good. And one of the good is to break the yoke that have held people bondage, which is sin and death through the gospel. Believers are not supposed to be miracle seekers. Hallelujah. According to God's word, believers should not be miracle seekers. They should be miracle dispensers. This is because miraculous power is part and parcel of us in Christ. It is not a special privilege of one strong man of God or one strong woman of God. It is a privilege of everyone who is born of God. Hallelujah. God of miracles is always with you. As long as you are with him, he's with you. Are you with him? Are you born again? Then he's there. Then your mandate is preach the gospel. Don't be carrying bad. You go to a party, go to a club and dance. And if something bad happens, the blood of Jesus, bring out olive oil you drink. You bring out anointing oil. You sprinkle, sprinkle. You take a wristband, your tie. You take a mantle. You put it on your head. That is not what God has made you. To be carrying nonsense up and down. You, you tie this band on your hand. You tie that one on your waist. You put your pastor's picture on your chest. You, 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 are, you are almost like a countless man everywhere you are going. That is not nonsense. You believe that there is power in that bottle of oil you are carrying. You believe, eh? You believe there is power in the handkerchief you are carrying. They call it mantle. You believe, no, so you believe in all those things, but you don't believe that there are all those powers dwell in you. Nobody says that, 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 that the fullness of the Godhead dwell in you bodily, because whatever is in Christ is in you. You don't believe that one. Hey, where's my bottle of oil? You know? Where's my bottle of oil? Those ones are for unbelievers and for baby believers. Those who just come who have not known. But when you are saying you have been a Christian for one year, six months, you are still, your, all your faith is in oil that is in a bottle. All your faith is in handkerchief. All your faith is in wristband. All your faith is in sticker. Sticker, you put sticker on your door. Put sticker on your car. Stickers should be for evangelism or to advertise something. It is not the power of God. The power of God is in you. And anywhere you go, it electrifies the place if you have that understanding. So you shouldn't be looking for a miracle service, miracle crusade, miracle that, miracle that. Unbelievers are supposed to be looking for those things, not you. The same power and grace that that man of God that is coming from another country to do miracle crusade in your country, that is what you have been carrying all your life. But because they have taught you to believe that you are, you are, that there are levels, there are levels. Let me tell you, you are, there are no levels. You are seated in Christ in the heavenly places, far above principles and powers. I say, uh, a, 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 a sergeant in the, in, in the kingdom of God cannot deal with a general in the kingdom of darkness. Who, where did they bring all those doctrines from? Even the newest child of God is seated in Christ. He has put to say, where I am, there you will be also. And that is where we are. So stop running up and down. Looking. Paul said, I remind you, fan into flame the gift of God, which is in you. Work out the salvation power that is in you with dedication and commitment, fear and trembling. Hallelujah. Christ has anointed you. He said, but you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit come upon you. And you have it. You don't need to feel it. You have it. You don't need a hand to shake for you to know it's there. You have it. 
So anytime my hand shake like this, I know that the power has come. No. Whether your hand shake or you know shake or is there. This is not a special privilege, as I said before, of any clergy. It is the special privilege of everyone that is born of God. Unbelief and doubt have rendered majority of believers powerless. And our religious clergymen are not helping matters because we want people to draw attention to us. So we make you feel that without us, you cannot expect. You need a prophet to make a profit. You don't need any prophet to make any profit. You need God's word to make profit. And that God's word is the gospel of Jesus Christ that has been given to you, that you believe that saved you. You don't need to connect to any man to experience God's power. All you need or is faith in what that man should be doing for you is to help you know, help you connect to God, not connect to him, connect to God. Yes, we can share our gifts. The, I have the gift of this, you have the gift of that. We can help one another with our gifts. But that doesn't mean that you are superior and I am inferior before God. No. Yes, we have leaders. We have Christian leaders. We respect them for being our leaders, but they are not the custodians of God's power to be dispensing is small, small to you believers. Yes, we all dispense to the unbelievers, but we all have. We join together, we work together as a body, and the gift is for benefit of us all. My gift is for you, your gift is for me. So I don't look for them, I don't seek them. I belong to the family of God, and every brother and sister there are all loaded. If we must all understand that, hallelujah. Our purpose in life relations is to break the yoke of ignorance and falsehood in the world and the church. So that you can walk in the liberty that you have in Christ. Hallelujah. You must believe that you have it and not doubt. Because the one who doubts is like a wave of the sea. Blown, toss and fro by wind. That person who doubts should not expect to receive anything from the Lord. James chapter 1, 6 to 7. Jesus said, if you believe, you will see the glory of God. So do not waver through unbelief regarding the word of God, but be strengthened in faith and bring glory to God as you demonstrate his power and glory. Go out in confidence and preach the gospel to all people and see God work in you to confirm his word with signs and wonders. Signs and wonders are not for you to go and be parading everywhere. You go, no, no, you know that I have power. Okay, I know I have power. You, don't, you, have not, you have not preached to anybody. Your point is to kill, fall down and die. I, if you tie me, eh, I will kill you. That is nonsense. You are not giving power of God to go and kill people. You are not giving the power of God to go and forsake people's life. Like the apostles who say, let us call down fire from heaven to consume the Samaritans. Jesus Christ, they don't know the kind of spirit you have. Hallelujah. Uh, if, if you don't deal with them, they will deal with you. If they deal with you, on their own, what will happen to them will happen to them. You don't even need to do anything. He said, evil shall slay the wicked, and the haters of the righteous shall perish. It is not you that will invoke it. Your power is not to go and invoke destruction and death on people. No. Your power is to bring people out of darkness into his marvelous light. How God anointed Jesus Christ of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power, who went about doing good and healing all those who are oppressed of the devil. For God was with him. And those who are oppressed of the devil, who refuse to receive freedom from, from God, and want to use the powers of the devil to attack you, that is when the power of God will avenge for you. You don't even need to do anything. He said, the Lord shall fight for you, and you will hold your peace. So if you are so much about fighting, 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 you will not have time to preach the gospel. And before you know it, you become intimidated, you fight the battle until you get tired. Angels are there to do that work for you. He said he will give his angels charge over you to keep you in all your ways. Concentrate on the major thing, the kingdom of God. Preach that gospel and the power of God goes with it. When Paul was preaching and a man was there trying to frustrate the gospel, that is when God struck the man with blindness. Hallelujah. Anybody who tried to frustrate the gospel, who tried to destroy the gospel, that God will fight the person himself. The gospel himself has power. It's a two-edged sword. The sword that delivers people, and the sword that destroyed those who decided to become agents of darkness. So my duty is not to begin to fight. Everyone, by the, uh, uh, born by fire. Born, I don't burn anybody by fire. I preach the gospel. I want, you to, I want to deliver you from fire. I want to deliver you from the bondage of sin and death through the word of God, through the gospel of Jesus Christ. And these signs shall accompany them that believe. 
this science are with us. May God renew our mind. May we wake up from our spiritual slumber. May all these thoughts that have kept us in bondage, even though we are born again, be removed. May we all be liberated. You say, eyes have not seen, ears have not heard. But God has revealed by spirit. May you, our eyes of understanding be reopened so I can receive, can collect what you have. I end with this small story. I've told this story job some time ago. Years ago, I went to the airport to escort one of my relatives that was traveling. I also went with other relatives. I was an officer of the law as at that time. And so when I got there, I didn't go with my uniform, but my ID card was in my pocket. An office, another officer of the law was at the airport who stopped us and said, we cannot cross. I begged him, please allow us. This my sister is traveling. So we can just uh, watch her go. He said, no way, nobody passes here except officials. I kept begging oh, almost how many minutes of begging. Ah, then I, I remember that my ID card was in my pocket. I remember that me too, I was an officer of the law. So I brought out my ID card and told him, I spread the call. When I showed him my ID card, he said, ah, you'd have told me all this while. <laughs> you'd have told me since you can go. I said, no, I don't want to go alone. I want to go with my family. He said, they are under your coverage, so you can, you can go with them. If I had known from the first time, I would have simply said that I crossed. Many, many years ago, that was 1989 or so, hallelujah, I was, I was, a, I was conducting traffic on a highway, on one of the uh, roads, you know, T-junction. I was conducting traffic, you know, you come, you come, was the traffic warden that day. And then, to show you that the power you have as an officer of the law, I looked at the line where I stopped, and I saw the third car in that line was my father's car with my brothers inside, and we are returning from work. And I was at that junction conducting traffic. I've already stopped that line and allowed others to pass. When I saw my father's car with my brothers inside, I stopped every other line and passed that line. And when my brothers saw me, they said, hey. I said, yes, your brother is in charge. And they passed. And then as soon as they passed, I blocked that side and released the other. <laughs> that is power given to me by the federal government. Hallelujah. And I exercised my authority. But I could have been there and say, hey, hey, I have been given that power. My ID card says, this office, I have the right. And it wrote other I won't tell you what that is the road there. But they have the word, it's authorized. Signs and wonders are your given authorization by God. May we not remain intimidated. I, I'm sorry, many of the preachers are not helping us to come out of this. That's why we, in the Light Foundations, and many others too, not only me, are coming out to tell us who we are so that we can wake up. But we too are saying it. We need to have ourselves wake up. Most of us preach it, but yeah, we don't leave it. So it's time for you not to not preach it, but leave it. You know it. Exercise it. May God help us to manifest the reality so that fear and weakness and intimidation will not swallow us up. He said, God has not given us the spirit of fear, but of power, of love, and of sound mind. These three tools are embodiment of all the gifts of the Spirit that have been given to us to manifest. Not only speaking in tongues, not only prayer, those pray in your room, no, but manifesting the life of God in you everywhere as you preach the gospel. Don't forget, you must be a preacher of the good news. That go into the world and preach the gospel is not for pastors. It's for every but Pastors are coordinators of everyone. Pastors are not the preachers of the gospel. They are the coordinators. They also preach like every other person. Every Christian is a preacher of the gospel. Touch not my anointed and do my prophets no harm. It's not for pastors. It's for every genuine born again child of God who is involved in the work of the kingdom. The pastors are the leaders who coordinate others to do the same work. Years ago, I led my church members on an evangelism trip. I was in front and they were following me. An old man about... 85 years old at that time with walking stick, joined us. We were all going. I was sharing tracks and preaching with others, everybody. And somebody called one of my bro uh, brothers in the Lord, in the member, and asked him, is that your pastor? He said, yeah. he's following you. He said, yes. ah, your pastor is following you. Oh, I was invited. One of our uh, uh, in schools where we do school outreach, one of the students died. And I was called to come and, you know, conduct the funeral. I went with my associate pastors. When I got there, 
The family were so happy because their church refused to bury the boy because they are owing some dues in the church. <laughs> and the family called me and said that I, the senior pastor of the church, I didn't send one of the junior pastors to come. I came by myself. Oh, they have never seen that type before. I said, that's not like senior and junior. We are all servants of God. We are all here to serve God and to be a blessing to the world. My problem is I want two people to be born again, to be saved. Hallelujah. So wake up. Don't say, this is the duty of pastors. I mean, I'm not a pastor. Okay? Me, I'm not a man of God. You're a man of God. I mean, I'm not a woman of God. You're a woman of God. Me, I'm not a prophetess. You're a prophetess. You're a prophet. Everything, all things are yours. Wake up. Wake up and go and manifest the accompanying signs that God has given to you through preaching of the gospel. But if you say, I've not preached the gospel, you just balance them between, you don't say anything. You must get up, preach the gospel. You can preach it by supporting those who preach through your offerings, through your tithes. You can say, Pastor Timothy, I want to support what you are doing. Please keep doing it. Whatever it costs you, I will give to you. Just make sure it's going on. You are part of the preaching. You can do it by sharing tracks. We have so many tracks here. You can go and share. There are books that have been written, the gospel, not just an ordinary book, but the gospel, only I write on the gospel, not this and that. Eh? Principle of the principle of that. I write the gospel. <laughs> so collect it, go and share, give to people. Buy them, the ones that are uh, expensive, you can buy them and then make it cheaper. I can give us money, print some, print it and distribute it for free. And we can do that. We have the Bible school where we train you in the word. It's another way of reaching out. You can say, okay, I want to sponsor some people in Bible school so that they can train and go and preach the gospel. You are, when you are doing that, you are also preaching the gospel. When you support the gospel, either by in words or in act, you are engaged in it. And the power of God shall also manifest in your own life. Amen. Let us pray. Father, in Jesus' name, we thank you for this word this morning. I trust that everyone who have listened to us will not be blinded, but that their heart will be open. I command every spirit that blinds the mind of men not to receive that gospel to be removed right now. I command every hardened heart to be loosed in the name of Jesus. You prince of the power of the air controlling that era, that, that dimension, that area that person is operating on. I command you spirit to get away. Let the word come in. Let the person have the, 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 the power to decide whether to receive or not. I declare that the word of God will enter into their hearts and bring light and deliverance to everyone this morning in Jesus' mighty name. And everybody say, Amen. Hallelujah. All right, we are done for this morning. Just pick up your offering wherever you are. I just said that you can support the gospel through giving. As you do that, the Lord blesses you and also empowers, express your empowerment more than ever before. Father, accept our offering. We give to the glory of your name. In Jesus' name, Amen. God bless you for being with us this morning. We will have another World Congress next Sunday. You can write us, you know, send a text message with the number you see there. You can call, you can ask questions, you can come over for one-on-one -on -one discussion, and the Lord will bless you. You can also enroll with the Bible College and uh, be taught. If you are a minister, you can come to FBTC, want to, or come to Christ the Temple Institute, and receive free uh, lectures for your spiritual well-being and empowerment to preach the gospel. God bless you. See you next week.